Hey what's up guys, Weekly Light here and today I'm going to be covering the Risk Runner Exotic SMG in the Destiny 2 beta. So its flavor text says, charge your soul and let the electrons sing. It has an intrinsic perk called Arc Conductor that it says, when taking arc damage, this weapon becomes more powerful and resists incoming arc damage. Kills extend the time in this overcharged state. Its barrel for the beta is the Arrowhead Break. It greatly controls recoil and increases handling speed. Its magazine option is extended mag, and it increases the mag size, but decreases the reload speed, which I assume makes it longer because I couldn't see it also being a fast mag at the same time. Its trait is superconductor. When arc conductor is active, shots fired have the chance to become chain lightning and return ammo. And finally, its stock is the short action stock, and it greatly increases handling speed. This weapon deals arc damage, and it seems to be themed entirely around arc damage. This can sort of be seen as Zalo Supercell 2.0. While Arc Conductor is active, this weapon is a PvE beast, as it can chain lightning between enemies just like the Zalo Supercell. Its damage isn't too amazing, but it sort of stuns enemies, like the Cabal will do their short little like head nod, and will stop shooting you for a second, which allows you to cl clean them up really easily. Also, it refills ammo just like the Zalo Supercell. However, its ammo restoration powers seem to be much stronger. You seem to recover ammo just for shooting instead of getting double kills. You could not even be shooting enemies and still be recharging your ammo if you have our Conductor active. For every single mission and strike in the beta, so the one mission and the one strike, there are Cabal enemies that will deal arc damage, so you can use this against the Cabal there. The final boss of the Inverted Spire Strike will also use an arc weapon, so that will help there. An interesting thing though is that the Vex Milk in the final boss fight does deal arc damage. So if you stand in the pools while you have a healing rift, or you don't even need the healing rift, you can just hop out when you're low on health, it will constantly proc the arc conductor perk, enabling you to always have the chaining and always have the infinite ammo. An interesting strategy I'd like to see is having three warlocks all sit out in near the edge of the map in the milk, alternating their healing rifts in order so that they can just have infinite ammo and mow down enemies in that room. So in conclusion, for PvE, if there are enemies that deal arc damage, this is a very fantastic gun and it feels a lot like the good old Zalo Supercell. However, if there are no enemies that use arc damage, you're sorta of out of luck and this performs, I would hope, just like any other arc SMG. So by picking your encounters, when you use this gun, you can greatly increase its effectiveness. For PvP, this gun plays just like your standard SMG in most other shooters. It has a very fast fire rate, but kicks like a mule, and is extremely low damage at long distances. This weapon is best used in tight quarters, and for close quarters combat. It should never be used for long range combat, as it's too inaccurate at distance and deals too little damage. It has a fire rate of 900 rounds per minute, but due to frame rounding, it might actually differ from 900 slightly. In close range, in PvP, the most damage I've gotten is 13 for a crit and 11 for a body shot. This means it has an effective headshot multiplier around 20%. It seems to be around a 15 shot to kill weapon. It's hard to count when it shoots so quickly and especially with the lag between the actual death and when I stop shooting. However, if it does take 15 shots at 900 rounds per minute, and 60 seconds to the minute, that would mean it's a one second time to kill on the dot. However, if it's more shots, if it's actually like 25 or something, and I really badly miscounted, then it would be a little over one second. But you get the point that this weapon shreds people up close. However, at a distance when you can't land 100% of your shots, it's time to kill will go up significantly. Overall, I'd recommend pairing this with a scout rifle or a pulse rifle that can cover the long ranges that this SMG can't. This weapon is heavily reliant on your enemies using arc weapons, such as the Risk Runner. If they are not using arc weapons, you don't get the cool ammo restoration feature, and you also can't chain, which makes this no different than any other SMG in the game. Since in PvP there are no elemental shields, having arc damage on this weapon does not benefit it at all, and I would imagine it performs the same as a kinetic SMG 
if the arc conductor perk is not active. Since this is the beta, many things can and will change with this weapon, but for now I'd say it's probably one of the top tier SMGs in the game against enemies who use arc damage. But against enemies who don't use arc damage, this seems to be a waste of an exotic slot if the one exotic rule still carries over from Destiny 1. The Zalo Supercell seemed to be a jack of all trades weapon against mobs and was great in pretty much every encounter that had Thrall in it. However, this Risk Runner seems to be only good if you're taking arc damage as opposed to if enemies are grouped up. So it seems like Bungie is starting to make the exotics more exotic and less jack of all trades. However, as is, this is 100% the best exotic currently available to the Warlocks in the beta. So thank you for watching and don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. I'm going to be trying to pump out more videos for the beta this coming week. Thanks again.